Hello witches, wizards and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts school letters, welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes for all of the food and drink that we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we made homemade bacon from scratch, in the shape of lightning bolts, make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if it's your first time in the kitchen and you want to see some more Harry Potter recipes, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell and then you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new video. Speaking of which, we're done with breakfast at the Weasleys, so let's see what's next. So let's head back into chapter four at Flourish and Blocks to see what's next. <laughs> okay, so after breakfast, Mrs. Weasley has bought out a flower pot containing flu powder, and they're gonna use this to get to Diagon Alley. So they're walking Harry through the process and telling him that he needs to be careful how he pronounces his words and say very clearly, but unfortunately he's very nervous and says diagonally. So he ends up somewhere completely different. The Weasleys aren't there on the other side. He's in a shop with loads of weird magical artifacts and then in walk the Malfoys and he almost gets caught by Draco, but he manages to sneak out. And now he's in a very dark and dangerous looking alleyway, but he bumps into a friendly face and that is Hagrid who tells him he should not be in Nocturne Alley. Now you're probably wondering, why is Hagrid in Nocturne Alley? Well, that's where I can see our next recipe. I was looking for flesh-eating slug repellent, growled Hagrid. They're ruining the school cabbages. Looks like this might be a healthy recipe. Then again, probably not. If you'd like to recreate this magical red cabbage and chocolate cake, all of the ingredients, measurements, and instructions will be on my website, bradleybakes.co.uk. The link is down below in the description. Okay, so for this week's recipe, we're gonna try something a little bit unconventional, but that's because we had red cabbage and I didn't just want to serve up some coleslaw or some salad. So we're actually gonna turn this red cabbage into a chocolate cake. And that is gonna help us get a little bit of the cabbagey flavor, but also a really, really nice moist sponge. And then as Hagrid is having some trouble with those pesky slugs on the Hogwarts school grounds, I thought we'd decorate this cake to look like the Hogwarts ground topped off with the Whomping Willow. First up is our sponge. So I'm gonna walk you through what you need to do to create your red cabbage and chocolate sponge cake. To begin, you want to cream your butter and sugar until light and fluffy. Scrape down the sides and then give it another whisk. Crack your eggs into a jug and then add them into your mix one at a time, beating until smooth. Add a tablespoon of flour if the mixture begins to curdle. At this point, you can then add in the rest of your flour, along with our flavorings, which is gonna be vanilla and mixed spice. We then need to prepare our red cabbage, and I'm gonna grate this really nice and finely so that we get the flavor and the moisture, but not the texture. And then finally, you want to get your cocoa and some hot water, mix into a smooth paste, and then add that into your bowl as well. Give this a good mix until it's well combined and then our cake mix is ready to go. Grease and line your baking tins and then pour in your mixture. Level it off and then these need to go into the oven to bake at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit for about 15 to 20 minutes. You'll know they're done when a skewer comes out clean. So while our cakes are cooling, we're gonna move on to making our buttercream icing. Now we've got that chocolate cake, which is gonna be the lovely soil of the Hogwarts school grounds. So then we're gonna contrast it with some bright green icing, which is gonna be the grass. It's a really simple buttercream icing recipe. So this is what you need to do. Place your butter into your bowl and whisk until smooth. Add in your icing sugar a bit at a time and keep on whisking it until it's light and fluffy. You then want to add in some milk and your vanilla flavoring and then give it another good whisk. I'm then gonna add in some green food coloring and you can add as much or as little as you like until you get your desired color. Once the cakes are cool, you want to use a serrated knife to level off the tops so they're nice and flat. We're then gonna place the first layer down onto our cake board and then add an even layer of buttercream on top. 
spread that over with an offset spatula and then sandwich your next cake layer over that. Repeat the process until all your cakes are stacked and then we're going to cover the entire cake with a thin layer of buttercream. This is our crumb coat which will help us get a nice smooth finish. Place that in the fridge to set for an hour and then we want to apply a second thicker layer over the top. Return it to the fridge until it's nice and firm. Okay, so our red cabbage and chocolate cake is nicely iced, so now we can move on to the final steps of decoration. And as I mentioned at the start, this cake is going to represent the Hogwarts school grounds, and of course, you can't have the school grounds without the Whomping Willow, so I'm going to use modelling paste to create a Whomping Willow cake topper, and then as there is red cabbage hidden inside the cake as well, I thought we'd make some fondant cabbages. We'll then finish it off with a little bit more buttercream just to fill in any gaps, and our cake will be good to go. This is what you need to do next. To begin, we're going to start off with our Whomping Willow decoration. And for this, I'm going to start by working some modelling paste in my hand, warming it up and making it easier to mould. I'm then going to pull off a small piece and press it down onto my board. And then you want to shape the bottom to look like the root of your tree. I've then taken some food safe wire, which is going to be our support, and placed it in the middle. You then want to take small pieces of your modelling paste, attaching that to the support wires to build up your trunk. Try not to add too much paste on, and if you start to see it leaning too much to one side, then you can always take a bit more off and smooth it down. To give it the twisted Whomping Willow look, I'm then going to gently rotate the modelling paste and then hold it in place. We then need to allow this to set for about an hour, just so it's nice and firm before we add on the branches. While the tree trunk is setting, you can move on to making your cabbages. And this is really simple. All you need to do is get yourself some purple and green fondant and then marble each piece with some white fondant. This will give you a natural cabbage look. Break off small pieces and then roll them into balls, which will be the center of our cabbages. Spread some icing sugar onto your worktop and then using the remainder of each colour, roll it out thinly and then cut out some small circles. Use some fondant tools to taper the edges and then you want to start layering these onto the centre. Keep going round, working it up until you get a nice cabbage look. Pop these down to one side to dry and then carry on working on the rest of your fondant. At this point your trunk should be more firm and solid so we're going to start working on the branches. For this I've taken some more of our support wire and tied it into knots to give us a thin and thick end. You then want to take more of your modelling paste using as little as possible and then attach that to your wire to flesh it out. Pierce a hole in the trunk and then press your wire in and then you want to work to join the two pieces together. The great thing about modelling paste is that you can blend the new piece of modelling paste to the already set trunk, using your fondant tools to cover up any seams. As this will still need time to set, you might want to use some supports to hold up the branches in place. Keep working around adding as many branches as you like, but remember, you don't want this to be too top heavy, otherwise it will come tumbling down. Place the willow to set and then once the branches have firmed up, you then want to roll out some more chocolate paste to help you get some nice vine effects over the Whomping Willow. Roll out the thin sausages of your paste and then you want to twirl them around the branches in varying angles. Use your fondant tools to help smooth them down into place at the seams. I've made sure each of my vines starts at the tree, goes along the branch and then finishes back into the centre of the Whomping Willow. Place the willow to set again and then you can move on to the final decorations for the cabbages. I've taken some purple food colouring and some green food colouring and mixed them together with some mixing alcohol to make a paint. And this is going to be used to give some low light to our cabbages. Allow this to dry and then we're going to go over with some highlights made from silver luster dust and mixing alcohol. 
work these into the groove and then for an extra touch of magic I sprayed over some edible glitter just to help them sparkle. And finally we're going to do the same for the willow, this time using black food colouring and mixing alcohol to add some definition to the tree trunk and the branches. You want to use one fine brush to work it into the grooves and then another brush to help you blend that together. The mixing alcohol should help this set rather quickly so then all that's left to do is assemble. To add some depth to the cake, I've taken our green buttercream and then added in slightly more green food colouring to get a darker shade. You then want to take a grass tip, place that into your piping bag and add in your icing. Start off by piping some of the grass into the centre of the cake. You then want to gently place your willow on top. The next steps are completely up to you so you can decorate as much or as little as you like. I like to add a few of the cabbages at the base of the tree and around the top and then sporadically place more of the grass all around that. You don't want to go too heavy here as otherwise you'll ruin the effect but having some grass every now and again really gives an extra element to the cake. I've added a few more around the bottom and we're done. The Whomping Willow Cake is complete and it looks so pretty I just hope nobody drives a car into it. So there you have it, our red cabbage and chocolate Whomping Willow cake is complete. It's a little bit unconventional, but trust me, the flavour that comes through from that red cabbage really complements the chocolate cake. And of course, when it looks this magical, all of your friends will want to dig in. That is all for this week's recipe. Let me know down below in the comments if you've ever tried red cabbage or any other wonderful vegetables in your cakes and what you think about this one. If you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell and then you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I'll see you next week. When it comes to the Whomping Willow and the Wizarding World, we don't do small portions. <laughs> that was so tasty. Mm-hmm.